Good morning. Welcome to the Oswestry Campus Virtual Open Event. In this session, we're going to be looking at the courses in Applied Science, Business, IT and Computing and Travel and Tourism. We've just got some short videos to show you from each of the tutors, just where they'll outline the courses and what's involved, and then they'll be on hand to answer any questions that you may have. So sit back, enjoy the videos and start thinking of your questions. Hello, my name is Carl Morris and I'm head of North Shropshire College. I would like to welcome you to our Oswestry Campus virtual open event. I thought I would start by explaining why you should consider Oswestry for your post-16 education. We offer a wide range of general and career specific courses ranging from sport, health and social care, early years, business, catering, plumbing, electrical, travel and tourism, hair and beauty to name a few. Our teachers are available throughout the virtual open event to explain the details of each course. In most cases, we offer different levels of courses, ranging from level one, level two, and level three, and access to higher education. Virtually all of our students progress onto positive career paths, whether that is university, a job, or an apprenticeship. Our timetable is very different to other colleges. The vast majority of our students come into college for three days per week. During this time, they work very hard, but, they have freedom for part-time jobs, work experience on the other two days. This also reduces their travel time into college. We have excellent facilities for all our courses with specialist workshops and practical areas where needed. If you are interested in a career in football, whether playing or coaching, please look into our football scholarship programme run in conjunction with TNS Football Club, the Welsh Premier League champions. If you have any questions, please take the opportunity to speak to teachers during this event. Staff will be available to discuss transports and finance queries as well. If you have not done so already, it is not too late to apply for next year. This can be done by filling in an application form found on our website. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy this event. Hi, I'm Mike, one of the teaching staff of BTEC Applied Science. What I really like about this course is that it exposes the students to a range of different job opportunities in science. And it teaches them the essential skills that they will need to fulfil these job roles. For example, our first year students have been learning about aspirin manufacturing industry, as well as the scientific principles in actually making aspirin in the lab and testing its purity. We look at the day-to-day -day roles of research scientists, which is my background, and that of chemical engineers in the pharmaceutical companies. The students learn how these scientists work safely and their daily motivations. The students are currently at home writing a scientific report on this research. They're going to be expected to be able to conduct independent research and to communicate complex scientific ideas. In addition to these essential skills, we are also learning about information in workplace labs and the importance of big data, both of which are becoming major areas of interest in science. I think the course gives a really good background in a wide range of topics and is a great stepping stone for real life work in science and university study. In business, we offer the Level 2 and the Level 3 programme. The Level 2 is a one-year course where you study business units alongside having the opportunity to explore other subjects related to business. The Level 3 is a two-year course as an equivalent to three A-levels and allows progression onto employment, apprenticeships or higher education. Both courses include theory and practical elements and are designed to represent the business world. For both, you cover a range of different units such as recruitment, marketing, looking at the legislation that has an impact on businesses, visual merchandising, accounting and things like enterprise, so where you explore what is involved if you were to set up your own business. The assessment methods vary and can include externally assessed exams alongside practical tasks such as designing a TV advert, taking part in a mock recruitment day, designing your own store layout hosting family fun days and charity events, as well as the £5 challenge. Now the £5 challenge is something that allows the students to work together, it allows them to be a bit creative and also kind of provides a bit of competitive streak in some of them. This is where the students work in groups to create items which they then sell at Christmas markets. By doing these types of activities it allows a number of different units to kind of be brought together as well as a number of different assignments as well and it provides some of that real life example to go with the theory that we're learning in class. 
The entry requirements for the level two are five GCSEs at grade E or two or above, and the entry requirements for the level three program are five GCSEs at grade C or four or above. Whichever route you take, you will explore the world of business and get a chance to take part in realistic workplace situations and develop skills that are going to benefit you no matter what career path you choose to take at the end of your course. Hello, my name's Tracy Brown. I'm a lecturer at North Shropshire College on the Oster Street campus. I work with the Travel and Tourism Department. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the course. It's a level three course. It's run over two years. At the end of the course, it's equivalent to three A levels. Uh, some people progress on to university. It's very popular uh, to do things like events management, international management, um, but you can link it into a language if you're fluent in a language as well. But there's lots of different avenues that you can go into at, at university. If not, you can go into the world of work and there's plenty of jobs um, in, the, uh, in the leisure and tourism industry. Uh, it has taken a little bit of batter in at the moment because of the, uh, the virus but just think it's two years time before you'll be leaving college so the industry will have recovered by then. Uh, tell you a little bit more about the course um, Overall, it will be 20 units that you do. So they're all different subjects, ranging from visitor attraction, cruises, UK as a destination, um, marketing, business, events. That's just to name just a few. We also do a overseas study program as well. So we will um, we go overseas once a year. Okay, this year we were due to be in Nice. But of course that was cancelled unfortunately but in the past we've been to things like Mallorca, um, Venice, Jersey, Malta, that's just to name just a few of them. Um, that what that you'll do that in your first year then in your second year we do do an overnight trip down to London that incorporates your um, cabin crew training which we would be doing at either Gatwick or Heathrow Airport. Um, there's certain things with the cabin crew that we can't do on premises, things like you're uh, putting out a fire on board an aircraft, evacuating it, how to open and close the, the safety doors, so we'd, we'd go down to London to be able to do that. We also do a lot of day trips. Okay, so we might go to Walton Towers or do a museum or um, we've done Shrewsbury uh, Prison before now, the tour there at the prison. We also do, um, we go to Liverpool quite a lot. We use like the travel agents there, the hotels. So there's lots of different variety that we do uh, to incorporate with the course. Um, the course fees are around about 500 pounds that includes your, all your trips and it also does include a uniform as well within the industry you are expected to wear a uniform in a lot of the industry so we start you from scratch at wearing uniform you don't wear it every day we only get you to wear it one day a week at the moment it's like black skirt or black trousers with a uh, black blouse and a necktie like i said only one day a week that and you'll get used to doing that I think that's everything on our course. If there's any more information that you do require, is please do contact me. Uh, you can go onto the website and contact me or directly on t.e.brown at hlnsc.ac.uk. Hopefully I'll see you in September. Have a good summer holiday. Hello there, I'm Robert Barlow and some of the things you'll study in uh, the first year will be game development, website uh, creation, uh, project management and then you'll have two exams, one will be uh, cyber security, the other IT service delivery and on top of that we'll do some actual uh, IT uh, support, uh, technical support specifically. Okay and then the second year we will do uh, IT uh, systems, uh, databases, social media and business, and then programming, mobile apps, development, and enterprise and IT. On top of that, we will likely go on a trip to a gaming expo. Uh, we will go visit some local universities, have 
see what could happen in the next step. Okay, so just before we finish up, um, there's going to be a closing video from Jack, one of my current uh, students. Um, I just wanted to talk that we at current do the level 3 IT, uh, BTEC. Uh, the college is considering doing a level 2, which will incorporate uh, various other subjects, um, including IT. Um, and then, in regards to the equipment, I've got pretty good computers in my classroom. Um, my advice would just be to uh, have something to back up your uh, data on, USB sticks, the cloud, etc. And then, um, in regards to trips and such, uh, we are likely to go to a gaming expo or um, as well as um, some of the local universities. Hello, my name is Jack Bevan and I'm a year one student currently studying Level 3 IT at North Shropshire College. I'll be speaking on behalf of other students within the course as we discuss our favourite things about the course and our excitement for the future. What we liked about the course so far was that we were able to develop on our own knowledge that we already had, but we were also able to develop skills that employers would actually like as well as your grades, such as charisma, communication skills and teamwork. I can confidently say that I have never been more ready for the working world than when I joined this course. One thing I got from asking other students was that it also helped build confidence as people were antisocial for a bit before but once they joined the course they started talking more. We're all extremely excited for the next year and what it holds for us as we learn new things and as we gain more options of what we can do in the future. We may have. Uh, looks like we've got a few questions coming through um, starting with applied science so uh, Mike if I can Bring you live first. Hi. Hi there. So, um, first question off the bat, uh, someone's asked, uh, which elements of science are studied? Is it a mixture of physics, biology and chemistry? Uh, it's quite a mixture. So it's um, a grounding in the scientific theory in biology, chemistry and physics. So it skews more towards biology. So we do a lot of genetics and molecular biology. Um, but there is uh, quite a lot of chemistry and physics in there as well. OK, thank you. Um, someone's asked, uh, what degrees could I go on to study after the Applied Science course? Uh, so we've had students in the past that have gone on to study uh, biomedical science and um, quite a few that have gone on for uh, nursing degrees as well. And uh, we also have quite a few students that go on to do apprenticeships in local um, scientific organisations and become lab technicians. And uh, we've also had uh, students going on for uh, veterinary uh, technicians as well. OK, brilliant. Um, is there much in the way of trips in, in the course as well? Yeah, so we um, we were going to be going to um, the university at Wrexham to uh, visit their labs, but uh, obviously with uh, what happened, uh, we couldn't go. But um, yeah, we do have trips to uh, local labs to find out what uh, scientists do on a day-to-day -day basis and uh, have a look at uh, the equipment they use as well. OK, great. Thank you. Uh, moving on to business. Uh, Louise, if you're there, uh, we've got a couple of questions that have come in. OK, um, the first question that's come through, uh, someone's asked, how would this compare to studying business at A level? Um, so in terms of um, the, diff the main difference is that it's not purely all exams. So we've got a mixture of Courseworks and practical assignments that go alongside um, your exam results to basically make up your whole qualification. At the end of it, though, you would still end up with the equivalent of three A levels, which would allow you to progress on to university of a course of your choice. So, yeah, that's the main difference is it's a bit more practical. We look at creating events and um, organizing your own business, marketing projects. Um, so there's much more of a practical element than just as opposed to exams. 
Okay, brilliant. Um, someone's asked uh, what trips do business get to do? Okay, so a bit like the others, we did have trips planned for this year. Um, they've obviously kind of been postponed for now. But trips that have previously gone on to in the past are things like visiting department stores and um, the travel centre places like that to look at visual merchandising. We go to the law courts um, and see examples of court cases. Um, we had a trip planned to Chester Zoo to have a talk from them about how they do their marketing and their business side. Similarly, we kind of go to universities and have a look um, if that's kind of a route for progression. And again, there's the potential of kind of an overnight stay or an overseas trip, um, which we'll look at based on kind of where it fits in each year and it will vary. OK, great stuff. Um, someone's asked what type of assignments will I do and what units will I cover on the business course? OK, um, so in terms of units, we cover everything um, we cover looking at enterprise so if you were to start up your business what would you need to consider we look at finance um, and accountancy so that kind of links in there we cover marketing um, and things like being creative and how companies kind of do their advertising and their branding we look at recruitment and HR and what needs to be considered there we also cover um, the requirements for planning an event um, and what's involved in that because a lot of students kind of choose that to go down as a route down afterwards um, and we kind of try and look at all the different sectors we look at retail and kind of management in that and we also consider things like legislation and how that impacts upon whether you are working for a business or whether you are running your own business okay brilliant uh, and then one final question someone's just asked um, yep. kind of a, a, an extension to what you just said really uh, what careers can you go into after the business course <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so similarly, you can go into any of those different kind of elements. Um, we've got students that very much use this course as a platform to springboard into their own jobs. So whether they're working in retail, but they want to progress to management. We've got students that kind of want to go to university and do a whole array of different things, either relevant or, or um, kind of as a, a sideline to it. We've got um, students that kind of go into events, get um, higher degree apprenticeships, um, go into kind of marketing, that's quite a popular one as well. So there's kind of a very broad range that you can kind of go into at the end. Okay, brilliant, thank you. Uh, moving on to travel and tourism. Tracy, uh, if I can bring you on next. I uh, just need to uh, unmute yourself, Tracy. There we go. Uh, someone's asked, uh, what trips are part of the travel and tourism course? Uh, normally, I guess, would be a, a caveat to that one. Yeah. Hi. Hi, yeah, we can hear you, yeah. Um, so, someone just asked what, what trips would be part of the travel and tourism course normally? Because the type of the course that it is, we have lots of trips going. We do have our overseas trip that we do once a year. Uh, we're usually away from anything from three to five days, depending on the cost. Been to lots of different places um, all over Europe. Um, we also do um, day trips. Uh, we do things like Alton Towers. We go up to Liverpool. We've got some really good links in with places up in Liverpool. Uh, like the hotels, the uh, region, we do a lot of the museums as well. Uh, but it depends on the group, what the group wants to do really. And we out students decide where we're going instead of me telling them where they're going. Um, obviously, coronavirus at the moment is very, very restricted this year. But hopefully next year things will start lifting again and we'll be able to visit a lot places but these students find it really worthwhile instead of writing about their assignments all the time they could take video evidence photograph evidence and use that as part of their assignment which they really enjoy okay brilliant sounds great um someone's asked do i have to wear uniform every day no it's only part time we get them to wear their uniform just one day a week especially when we do cabin crew and overseas reps because there's a lot of practical aspects in it and so it's nice to get them 
to uh, wear a uniform. Now, the students that are on the photos of all our promotion at the moment are actually wearing the old uniform. The new uniform is black with a with a tie, so it's more we've modernised it this year. Okay, brilliant. We'll uh, have to come and get some fresh photos of that then for marketing. Yes, um, someone's um, asked, uh, what jobs can I do after the, the travel and tourism course? The industry is the second largest industry in the world outside of uh, finance and banking. There's a lot, a lot of people employed in the leisure industry. People don't realise that things like events management, um, every hotels, cruising, any holidays, that's all part of the industry. We have a lot of people go into different jobs, but also this course doesn't set you up just to do travel and tourism. We've had students that leave us uh, because we do a lot of like marketing, business, uh, customer service as well. We've had students go into uh, working in banks. We've also got somebody that actually works for shops in County Council at the moment in their marketing department. And we do all their brochures. They, they do all the online uh, business as well. So there's lots of different jobs and each person is different. There's, it is so variety for people to look in to different jobs. Okay, brilliant. Um, quite relevant to that, someone's asked, is it still worth training to work in the tourism industry with everything that's going on? Yes, it is. The tourist industry will be the first to recover. Like people enjoy traveling, they enjoy going out, okay? It's not as if, um, you know, the tourist places will be opening back up. And people love their holidays, love going to um, things like events, um, musicals, um, things like that. So it will. And this course you've got to think is two years. By the time you finish your course, there'll be a lot, lot more jobs about and the industry will have opened up fully by then. OK, brilliant. Thank you very much, Tracy. Uh, moving on to uh, computer science, IT. Uh, Rob, if I can just bring you in. Are you OK? OK, so uh, we've got a few different questions. Um, someone's asked, how much programming do we get to do uh, and what programming languages do we use? OK, so we get to do uh, programming for only one unit. However, it is recovered in game development as well because we need the uh, the, the sprites to move. So, so for programming itself, we're likely to use Python, uh, which is seems to be uh, universally recognised now. Um, when I did it many years ago, um, it was a C++. So some students that are way ahead with programming, I thought uh, they're okay. They they're fine to use whichever language they're competent in. However, if they're starting off with programming, then it'll be Python. That's quite an easy language to start off with. And then for game development, we'll be using C Sharp because that's the easiest way to get the sprites to move. OK. OK, brilliant. Um, someone's asked, is there a lot of free reign in the projects we can produce? Um, yeah, I mean, by all means. So when we're doing mobile apps creation or game development, I'm not really going to dictate what sort of game I want to see. You know, if you want to make, I don't know, the next uh, Mario, then you know you could make that, or if you wanted to make I don't know Tetris or something like that, you know it's up to you really. Then the same with the mobile apps. I like to see individuals' creativity. So, you know, some of them were making games, some of them were making a chat app, some of them were making um, a bit like a picture, a, bit, a, bit, a little bit like Snapchat, I suppose. You know, it's sort of leave, leave it up to their own free reign, really. Okay, great stuff. Um... Someone's asked, uh, what careers do students go on to do after the IT course? OK, so I actually studied the same course that I teach. Um, and I, when I left, I, were, I was a technician straight away. So I went straight from college to being a technician. Um, you know, which which I, I really enjoyed. And then, um, but I mean, you know, technology is in everything now. So regardless of it, uh, the, I mean, there's a multitude of options. Banking, cybersecurity, project management, and I do also promote uh, entrepreneurial skills. So um, some students go off to make their own games. You know, they'll do it through uh, perhaps university or uh, Kickstarter, you know, fundraising sort of 
platform. But on top of that, um, uh, I mean, there's a multitude of options, really. I mean, we're all there, <laughs> but that's that's. I mean, I think I think technology is in everything. So yeah, the options are out there. Yeah, so there's, there's not that many jobs out there now that don't involve some form of technology, is there? Yeah, and that's it. Yeah, exactly. OK, uh, and then one final question. Um, does someone need to have any prior programming language to start this course or no, no. is it more the enthusiasm? I mean, this is the uh, I mean, there is a massive gulf with programming and. Uh, you know, some of my students, I mean, I've got a couple now, two or three maybe, that are probably what I would call a, a, you know, a fluent programmer. However, that's one unit out of, what, 16? So for them, I sort of leave them a little bit of free reign, really. You know, you, you, you build on your skills that you've already got. However, I'd say at least 50% of the class had no programming experience. So for them, it was more... You know, let's let's start with print statements, then variables, then you know, sort of build like scaffolding the knowledge. So, I mean, with programming, there is a big gulf, you know, which um, I think any uh, computer teacher would recognise that, and any employer as well. So, for me, you know, there's loads of programming languages. So, some of my students will be shining in, uh, I don't know, Luna or something, and that's something I've never done. You know, so programming, it's sort of, uh, there's so many languages now. I mean, you can even create your own language, but uh, I mean, uh, for, for your assignment, it'd have to be uh, obviously a language that I recognise to be able to market. Okay. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Okay. Um, Mike, if I could just come back to you, there's a couple more questions that have come through for applied science. Hi. Uh, so someone's just asked, um, what exam board is Applied Science? Uh, it's uh, Pearson BTEC. Um, that uh, yeah. room pass. Yeah. OK. Uh, and it's a pretty good website if someone wants to take a look and find out a bit more about um, the course. It's um, you just search for BTEC Pearson Applied Science. It's all up there. OK, that'll give like a breakdown of the units and that sort of thing. Yes. OK, brilliant. Uh, and someone's asked, is there any work experience in applied science? Uh, so all the students are expected to do some work experience, um, expected to uh, find a, a local placement, and obviously we can help with that as well. But yeah, it will be uh, uh, part of the course to be expected to do work experience. OK. Brilliant, thank you. So I think that's all of the questions that we've had come through. So we'll wrap things up there. Uh, so this session will be recorded and uh, will be on our YouTube channel for you to watch again. Uh, if you're watching that recording now and think, oh, they haven't asked the question I wanted to know, if you contact the college through either the website or through our social media channels, we can direct your queries to the tutors uh, and they'll be able to answer any queries that you may have. Um, but for now, thank you for watching. Uh, please feel free to watch our other events later on today. Uh, they're pretty much on the hour every hour. Um, but for now, thank you very much for watching and goodbye. <laughs>